Coming up next on In the City, our city manager provides us the numbers of what city services will cost citizens on a monthly basis. Then we meet the newest member of the city school board, Jared Barrett. He shares why he is so passionate about the Murfreesboro school system. Also, with equipment and staff in-house at the Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department, find out how they're saving the city money. And finally, Patterson Park's weight loss program has had another successful run. We'll hear those success stories and meet some of the biggest losers. All this and more coming up on In the City. Welcome to another edition of In the City, your source for what's happening right here in the city of Murfreesboro. I'm your host, Fadia Patterson. How much do you think you would pay a month for police services? How about trash pickup? Our city manager broke down the numbers and you would be surprised how the total for all city services compared to other monthly bills you pay. One of the things we want to try to do uh, for our residents is to help explain to them the value they get from the city of Murfreesboro. Uh, certainly we all are used to paying our monthly bills, our mortgage, our car insurance, our cell phone bill, our cable bill. Um, and so the thought occurred to us that we could put city services in that same context of a monthly bill. Uh, now some people pay for their uh, property taxes through uh, an escrow account on their mortgage. Uh, other people come in in December and write us a check. Uh, but we thought we could put it in, in a context of those other monthly bills. Uh, so in looking at the uh, current fiscal year, we determined that the average house in Murfreesboro pays $48.15 per month uh, for city services. Uh, now that really does sound like a good deal when you realize that that $48.15 uh, pays for uh, a police department, uh, a fire department that's got the highest rating in the state of Tennessee, uh, all of our parks, our roads, our economic development projects. It also includes your garbage pickup. The city does not send you a separate garbage bill for residential uh, garbage pickup. So um, everything provided by the general fund is funded out of that $48.15. For those not familiar with how the general fund receives its money, Lyons breaks down the sources. Now the, the city's uh, general fund budget comes from three major categories of, of money. Uh, the first is the property tax. That's the $48.15 piece we're talking about. Uh, another third comes from uh, sales tax collections. Uh, and finally, uh, the, the final third comes from all other revenue sources of the city. Um, so we can see how we've diversified our, our revenue. That's one thing that has contributed to the ability for us to provide uh, services at an affordable rate. Lyons adds the total cost of city services is very comparable to other bills you pay each month. We all uh, have a need, I guess, to, to have a mobile phone. Uh, we like to watch TV. Uh, both of those bills uh, typically are going to be more than that $48.15 uh, charge coming from the city and, and we're really providing core services that are important to us. Archaeologist and school board member Jared Barrett gets up close and personal in the latest edition of Meet Your School Board. The Michigan native shares his vision for the future of the school system. Uh, Jared Barrett, I serve on the Murfreesboro City School Board. I was just elected in April of this year. I felt really excited and I was, you know, and my, my wife later told me she was very proud of me and that just made me feel good and it just was, it was great to see all the support in the new member. You know, we also have another new member and the other returning members and it was just, it was just a great positive feeling. Everybody congratulated me and wished me well and offered any help that they could offer, especially since I was new to the board. So it was just really, I felt great. <laughs> A couple things prompted me to get involved. Uh, one, uh, my wife and I are planning to have children someday and I wanted to make sure the schools were qu you know, quality education. They already are, but just to continue that. Also, concern for our teachers and our children in the schools and just make sure we continue that quality education. My routine usually involves uh, answering emails, phone calls from constituents, you know, just issues that come up, uh, reviewing board policy before our meetings, uh, getting out into the community and going to school events, just getting into the schools and making sure visiting with principals, teachers. Um, originally, I'm from Michigan. I, grew, I was born and raised. My mother's a teacher for 20 plus years, social studies, math. My dad is a mechanic at a golf course, and I have a brother and two sisters. Uh, 
and that's a little known thing about me. I, I have a twin brother, and, uh, and a lot of people don't know that. He still, all my family still lives up in Michigan. I was the only one that moved away. Uh, moved down here for my job. I graduated in 2002 with a master's in anthropology. I'm an archaeologist, and uh, there was really enough, no jobs up in Michigan for what I wanted to do. And uh, Tennessee had an opportunity, and I came down here. I actually worked for uh, TRC Environmental Corporation as an archaeologist. Uh, environmental compliance, uh, we do archaeological survey. For me as an archaeologist, you know, that's a science-based industry. I just feel like it's critical that we continue to foster that. You know, I know we're, we're, we're currently trying to make inroads with MTSU and just trying to partner with them for our science. And I know Dr. Gilbert has been tr working on strengthening our science in the classrooms. I think that's a great thing. It only helps our students, it helps them in, in life and in, in being able to get a a career after you know right now we only do pre-k through sixth grade but that helps them on the right foot when they go on to high school so I've lived in Murfreesboro nine years uh, but it's just been tremendous growth I live on the west side of town over by Case and Lane and the growth has been phenomenal you know we're actually getting ready to build a new school on the west side of town and with that brings a set of challenges and opportunities for our school system but it's just the growth has been a challenge, but I think our city's been up to the task. Our, our schools have definitely been up to the task. I found that out by being on the board for only six months. It's just, we have a great staff and, and Dr. Linda Gilbert, she's our director of schools and uh, she's been a fantastic resource and the other board members as well. The, you know, the new school, you know, we, we got some things coming up with that and I think that's gonna be its own set of challenges, but I also think there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, just continuing to our outreach into the community, uh, strengthening our outreach with MTSU and other businesses. I think that only adds to our schools, you know, with our extended schools program. Uh, if we could continue to work on that, I think that'll really strengthen what we have to offer to our children and our parents for that matter. That'd be, I think that'd be a great thing to do. For more information about Jared Barrett and other school board members, you can visit our YouTube channel. Rita Shacklett, director of the Linebaugh Public Library, tells us about some upcoming events and programs in March you definitely don't want to miss. Hello, I'm Rita Shacklett, director of the Linebaugh Public Library System. Linebaugh Public Library is located at 105 West Vine Street. Our hours of operation are Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sundays, 1 to 6 p.m. Here are some upcoming events at the library that you and your family can enjoy. It's not too late to join the winter reading program at Line Ball Library. Read and report on six books between January 28th and March 9th to win great prizes. Sign-ups continue at the circulation desk. The Rutherford Writers, Inc. will meet on Saturday, March 2nd and 16th at 10 a.m. in the boardroom on the second floor of the Line Ball Public Library. All writers looking for help and insights into writing are invited to join. The Afternoon Book Club will meet on Thursday, March 7th at 2 p.m. to discuss Copper Beach by Maeve Benchy. This book group will now be meeting in the first floor story room. The Friends of Lime Ball Library will hold their monthly book sale on Saturday, March 16th from 9 a.m. until noon. The bookstore is located on P2, or the upper level, of the parking garage under Lime Ball Library. Tuesday, March 12th from 1 to 4 p.m., local author E.K. Henry will be selling and signing her book, Freak, at Lime Ball. The seniors group meets on the first Thursday of every month at MGL. There is also a Senior Citizens Game Day on the fourth Thursday of every month. Both events start at 12 p.m. GED classes are offered every Tuesday and Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Club Read will be Friday, March 8th at 1 p.m. at Smyrna Public Library. Registration is not required. Just read the book and stop by. This month's title will be Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Free VITA tax assistance continues at Smyrna Library through March. Assistant dates for the month are March 9th and 23rd. This program begins at 9.30 a.m., but we recommend that anyone interested be at the library when the doors open at 9 a.m. 
Registration is done on the day of the tax assistance. Smyrna Riders will be meeting on Saturday, March 9th for a discussion of Orson Scott Card's book, How to Write Science Fiction and Fantasy. They will also meet for peer review and discussion on March 23rd. Both programs begin at noon. Join us for preschool story time at Eagleville Bicentennial Public Library on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. and step into the magical world of books. For more information about events at the library, please visit our website at lineball.org and follow us on Twitter at L-I-N-E Library. A big project on the Coleman Farm was just completed by the Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department. With the department having the staff and equipment to handle a project that size, it's paying off for taxpayers. To give you a background of the construction crew, which was started in 1999 under the direction of our former director, Mr. Joe Kirshner, uh, we got approval from the board to start the, the construction crew. Uh, that was in 1999. All the equipment you see was purchased and is owned by the Water and Sewer Department. All the employees that you see are employees of the Water and Sewer Department. Over the years, we've done uh, several different projects, which uh, included upgrade, upgrading water lines, uh, rehabbing sewer lines. Uh, that's been going on for the past uh, 13 years. Uh, this past summer, uh, we uh, installed 8,000 feet of 24-inch reuse on the John Coleman farm. Uh, it is the largest project that this crew has actually done. The Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department receives wastewater from sinks, toilets, and tubs throughout the city. It is treated, and a lot of it is released back into the Stones River. The Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation has told the city they can only release so many gallons in the river. Any amount over that number has to be released elsewhere. This water is called treated affluent. The city purchased the Coleman farm off of Central Valley Road to release this treated affluent. This is a land disposal site that we can come in and irrigate. Uh, we have the ability to uh, release about a half a million gallons per day at the John Coleman farm. This spring we hope to start irrigation full time down here on the Coleman farm depending on the weather has a lot to do with it. Of course, during rainy seasons and stuff, we won't be able to irrigate as much as we do in dry part of the year. Uh, we're also cutting hay off of this and farming it out. And the area farmers will come in and give us bid per bale for the hay. So we are making money back off of this also too. It's the biggest job I've done for the city, but I've been in it many years. I've did this before, so. It's, uh, it's a good job, it went well. We averaged about 200 feet a day, and well, we had some 24 inch pipes while we was laying. There's places we had to go real deep in order to get on the roadways and other utilities, that existing utilities were here. We cleaned out a lot of the fence rows and old barns and houses and buildings and stuff was just about to fall down. We, we took those down and uh, got rid of those. By the time we had the job half done, we had the other half seed and straw. Terry Taylor, operations superintendent, talks about this job compared to other similar jobs the city has done. We installed a project at a cost of about eight hundred and nineteen thousand uh, dollars. We compared that cost to another project that was done by an outside contractor for the water and sewer department back in 2005. Uh, using those unit prices uh, with what the contractor used and our prices uh, the total uh, estimated cost for us, or total estimated cost for the contractor, was about a million three hundred fifty thousand. Our cost to install the twenty-four inch on the John Coleman farm was eight hundred nineteen thousand. So we had a considerable savings. What's good about this treated affluent water is that it can be used to irrigate properties throughout the city, including some neighborhoods. Since this water has to be released anyway. It's a great way to recycle water. We irrigate the Seagull Soccer Park. Uh, we irrigate Old Fort Golf Course. We irrigate a lot around the new avenues. Uh, we do have some uh, uh, residential sites that have access to reuse water that they irrigate their lawns with. It's basically just like uh, 
regular residential meter. We will furnish the tap and set the meter and then from the meter on would be the customer's responsibility. It's very cheap and reasonable right now. It's a very minimum cost to do it. At this point, it's something that we've started in the last few years and stuff, so it's very reasonable price. And as Rutherford County grows and Murfreesboro grows and stuff, of course, the more people come in, the more sewer that we have to deal with. So this is just an alternative way for us to meet the demands of, of the community around. Becky Johnson, the Parks and Recreation Department's Marketing and Special Events Coordinator, stopped by to talk about some great activities coming up. Becky? Hi, I'm Becky Johnson with the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department. We have parks, greenways, and facilities all across the city with lots to offer. Here are some programs and events for you and your family. CPR, Crafts with Parks and Recreation. McFadden Community Center, located at 211 Bridge Avenue, is excited to host a new crafts program every Tuesday and Thursday from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Each week, participants will have the opportunity to learn new crafting techniques that they can use for years. Some classes will have specific themes and is geared towards ages 7 through 14 years old or 6 years old with a parent. The program is free. For more information, contact Marlene Sewell at 615-893-2141. Stroller Coasters. Walk the Greenway for an hour each week with your child and stroller, and then stay and play for optional non-stroller activities for the kiddies. Enjoy meeting other parents and caregivers while you get in shape exploring the Greenway and spending time with your child. For ages birth through five years, plus adults, on Thursdays, March 7th through May 16th, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. to walk, then stay and play until 10.30 or so. Meet at Old Fort Park Kids Castle. The program is free. For more information, contact Melinda Tate at 615-893-2141, or in case of inclement weather, call 615-893-2141 for cancellation information. American Red Cross Water Safety Instructor Class. Become certified by the American Red Cross to teach swim lessons. This class will instruct you how to teach strokes for swimmers and non-swimmers of all ages. For ages 15 and older, the class will be held Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, March 8th, 9th, and 10th. Registration is required, so sign up now. The fee is $172. For more information, contact Nikki Hensley at 615 895-5040. Community yard sale at Cannonsburg Village. Vendors sign up now. Reservations required for booth space. Entry deadline is Tuesday, March 19th. For a list of yard sale booth rules, contact Cannonsburg Village. The yard sale is Saturday, March 23rd from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Cannonsburg Village. The booth fee is $10. For more information, contact the Cannonsburg office at 615-890-0355. Citywide Easter Egg Hunt. Children of all ages will enjoy this hunt. Participants will hunt for eggs and then exchange them for prizes at our exchange booth. Age-appropriate hunts will be offered repeatedly throughout the event, ensuring that everyone has a fair chance. In addition, there will be carnival-style games and a visit from the Easter Bunny. The Easter Egg Hunt will be held at Richard Siegel Community Park on Saturday, March 30th at 1 o'clock p.m. and the event is free. For more information, contact Thomas Laird at 615-907-2251. For more information about these events and programs, please pick up our Rec Connection Program Guide, which may be found at any of our facilities, or visit us at murfreesborotn.gov slash parks to download a copy. For other information or general questions, call us at 615-890-5333. Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department, dedicated to enhancing your quality of life. The Patterson Parks Weight Loss Program has had another successful run. Participants in the program are shedding the pounds, getting healthier, and embarking on a new lifestyle. I'm doing it because my wife signed me up for it. John Harrison is one of many happy participants in the Patterson Park weight loss program. They gave me what I needed, giving me 
direction in the way I need to go. And I've lost 25 pounds now. Giving directions towards a healthier lifestyle is one of the many initiatives of the Patterson Park program as they've helped many lose at minimum 30 pounds. Everything that you need to know, uh, we provided them with the tools and knowledge for them to uh, begin their weight loss. Uh, we noticed that in the first time that we did this, we had people losing up to 30 pounds, so we found it successful. Um, you know, we, had, we would have about 50% of the people that would lose weight, 50% of people would lose uh, some weight, but we had a 50-50 margin where 50% did really, really well. Last year's cycle produced one of the biggest losers, Jana, pictured here before and after, who's lost to date a total of 60 pounds. And there are more success stories. So I joined the 12 week weight loss challenge and over four years ago, I was the weight loss challenge winner. The program has helped some to restore their failing health. Um, I, in 2011, I developed breast cancer and I had been working out some before then, but because of the surgery and the chemo and the radiation, I had to stop. So all of last year, uh, and, and half of the year 2011, I was completely out of the exercise program. And so late November of 2012, uh, I had hooked up with Chad and started working out with him as a personal trainer. If you're kind of a novice to all those things, those can be sort of intimidating. So they make it really easy for you. They are with you side by side. You work with a trainer one on one twice a week for 12 weeks. And so you come out pretty confident in how to go ahead and continue that exercise program as you go through the rest of your life practically. It was not so easy. So you actually experience all those ups and downs. Uh, the staff here is very good with helping you to try to set those goals and help you to reach those goals. Assistant Wellness Coordinator Jane Ogg stresses that the changes are deeper than physical. They are learning that it takes more than just exercise and you can't out train a bad diet. Nutrition is key and your lifestyle change. It's very important that the participants understand that there are two sessions with us a week um, are not it, it's not the solution to weight loss. That's why we have guest speakers that come in and talk about nutrition and we try to teach them how to change their life and continue on this path after the 12 weeks is up. For more information about the training and other programs at Patterson Park, you can call 893-7439. Linda Burt is back to tell us about some of the upcoming classes, trips, dances, and other programs being offered by the St. Clair Street Senior Center. Hi, I'm Linda Burt. If you're a senior in Murfreesboro, we'd love for you to come and check out the St. Clair Street Senior Center. There's always something happening at St. Clair, all with you in mind. Here are just some of the activities we have coming up. February 27th at nine o'clock is the Bob Ross painting class. The subject for the class is Forest Edge. Space is limited, so come into the Senior Center and sign up and paint a beautiful picture. February the 27th at 10.30, is beginning tap dance class. Have you ever wanted to learn how to tap dance? Michelle Palmer is the instructor and she will teach you the dance steps. February 28th at one o'clock is Diabetes and Me support group. The discussion is a day in the life of someone with diabetes. March the 1st at eight o'clock is sign up day at the Senior Center. This is your first chance to sign up for the new classes, trips and events. March the 1st, we will be signing up for the Cape Cod trip for August. There are flyers about the trip at the Senior Center. Be sure and stop by to pick up one so you can be ready to sign up for the Cape Cod trip. Other trips include Harrah's in Metropolis and Tunica, Mississippi. There are many wonderful day trips to theaters, restaurants, and shopping opportunities. March the 1st at 11 o'clock is Ask the Doctor. Neurologist Dr. John Witt is the guest speaker. You must be signed up to attend. March the 1st is the last day for women to sign up for the RAD self-defense class. The classes are from 4.30 to 7.30, beginning March the 4th. The classes are a series of classes that build on each other. The classes are four Mondays in March. You must attend all four classes to get your full training. March the 8th at one o'clock is the Chicken Foot Tournament co-sponsored with the Senior Center and Parks and Recreation. What a fun game that is played with dominoes. The Senior Center has exercise and fitness classes throughout the week. Check the leaf 
the monthly newsletter for all exercises and fitness classes. Some of the classes are core strength, Zumba gold, Zumba toning, yoga, dancer size, and many more. The AARP tax consultants are taking appointments for tax assistance. Call the Senior Center to get an appointment. There's no charge for this service. We'd love for you to come and be a part of what's going on at St. Clair Street Senior Center. If you'd like to join us and sign up for classes, trips, and events, we're located at 325 St. Clair Street. And for more information, you can call us at 848-2550 or visit us on the web at www.murfreesborotn.gov. Come and join us. In order to honor friends of the City of Murfreesboro on Facebook, we present City TV's Facebook Friend of the Week. This week, it's Bill Durkin. You too can be our Facebook Friend of the Week by liking us after you type in City of Murfreesboro on the Facebook website, or you can click on the Facebook link on the city's website at www.murfreesborotn.gov. In other news, ESP is Murfreesboro's signature program as it was the flagship for many ESP programs throughout our nation. Here's why you should enroll your child today. The Extended School Program is a year-round extension of the daily six-and-a-half-hour school day. ESP offers students the opportunity to become involved in enriching activities and gives parents the convenience of safe school-based care for their child. In 1978, Tennessee lawmakers passed legislation encouraging the use of public school facilities for the before and after school care of children. Our program is so important to our students, um, especially for those who have worked Working parents and need somewhere to go after school, we really provide a safe and structured uh, learning environment for them and it just really extends um, their learning day. Um, it's extended school but it's not necessarily extended school where they're sitting in the classroom and just doing the same thing that they've been doing. Um, they've had a lot of creative options. My seven-year-old for instance has enrolled in a couple of ESP art classes and I think they've really, he has, a, he has a great art teacher at Mitchell Nielsen Primary as it is. I think that they've really helped augment not his art skills but also his interest. My name is Xavier Hamler and I'm the supervisor of ESP with Murfreesboro City Schools. Welcome to Elite Energy! The ESP program is a program that um, provides a safe educational and enrichment environment for kids before and after school. We provide quality child care for those students. Uh, we have staff that uh, keep those students and do very exciting and enriching things with them before and after school. For more information, call the ESP office at 615-893-2313. Other items going on within the city, the Patterson Park Community Center pool will be closed starting March 11th for three weeks to repair the auxiliary boiler, replastering the shell, repair the triple loop slide, and to replace the dehumidification system. Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department is being equipped with a Polaris Ranger that will be used by the Special Operations Team. Murfreesboro Police Chief Glenn Chrisman is assigning officers to city court to provide a presence in the courtroom during sessions. The Parks and Recreation and the Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department now have their own Facebook pages. Matt Jarrett of the Information Technology Department is the latest recipient of the STARS Award. There were 35 single-family permits issued in January. Through the first seven months of 2013, there are 68 more permits than there were the same time in 2012. As always, our goal here at Murfreesboro City TV is to provide you with local city information 24 hours a day. So if you'd want to find out what's happening right here in your town, pick up a copy of our program schedule at the Linebaugh Public Library, the St. Clair Street Senior Center, or the city's website at murfreesborotn.gov. If you'd like a copy via email, just send the request to CityTV at MurfreesboroTN.gov. Remember, on the city's website, you have city programs and meetings right at your fingertips. And the City TV channel is streaming live 24 hours a day at www.MurfreesboroTN.gov. In addition, please visit us on YouTube as we offer a wide variety of programming just for you. Until next time, I'm your host, Fadia Patterson, and we'll see you soon in the city.